I decided to make this video after I got a few requests. I posted a picture of this wall in the Army Painter fan page group, and a lot of people asked if I would make a video about it. They wanted to replicate it for themselves. So here's the video. Let's dive right into it. This is what the wall looked like when I shared it in the group, but I couldn't print another wall. It's a resin 3D print, so we're just going to have to do something with this one. This might be agonizing for some of you to watch me paint over something that I put any amount of effort into, but stuff like this doesn't really bother me. I recently traded away a huge chunk of my army I painted over the last four years, and that does a really good job of numbing you to the pain of uh, losing things you've painted. This was test footage to make sure my lighting was right. I just wanted to point out this awesome model my wife painted. I just really like it, and I thought I would share. You can use any white or gray that you have for dry brushing these. I just prefer this Liquitex paint because it's very cheap per milliliter and it's high quality paint. I'm just using some cheap dry brushes. Uh, I think one of these is from Amazon, one of these from the dollar store, and the chisel tipped one is from some pack. And here are the stars of this video. I absolutely love these paints. Uh, Dark Wood, Absolution Green, Gravelord Gray, and Cloudburst Blue. I picked these colors for this wall based solely on the fact that I like the colors. I know walls don't traditionally have blue weathering on them, but it looks cool, and really that's all that matters. When you're mini painting, just follow rule number one. If it looks cool, you're probably doing it right. And here's some terrible shaky cam footage that I used because I was dumb and forgot that I had a camera mount for my phone, and I'm just applying the dry brushing paint here on my dry palette. It's not really a dry palette so much as a worn out and covered in super glue cutting mat. Just use whatever you have on hand. I just get a little bit of paint on the dry brush and then I wipe it on the dry palette. I try not to use paper towels for this part of the dry brushing. Pay attention to the way I'm dry brushing. I'm starting from up high and working my way down and across the model to get kind of streaks. And you'll see I also do some stippling and it's just a way of adding texture and a variation of the color. Pressing at different pressures and stippling at different pressures is going to put more or less paint on the model which will affect the way the dry brush looks at the end. Once I have the gray down I start to mix a little white in and just go back over some places where I really want highlights particularly the edges toward the top. As an honorary member of the Edge Highlighting Haters Club I just want to share this tip. I use like this chiseled tip brush and I just kind of flick the brush across the sides where I would normally put edge highlights because edge highlights are terrible and no one likes them. Here I'm prepping my wet palette for the speed paints. I use speed paints on my wet palette exclusively. I don't use them any other way. Uh, this bottle is really handy for just hydrating your wet palette and it's also good for airbrush work and stuff like that. I don't know why people don't use speed paints in their wet palette. I keep seeing in groups and stuff, they, they're so alarmist about it. It's almost like they think your model's gonna explode if you apply speed paint mixed with water onto stuff, but it's not that big of a deal. I think it really comes down to brush control and how much moisture you have loaded in the brush when you get the speed paints. If you look closely on my wet palette on the bottom and the middle, those are the four speed paints I used to paint this originally a week ago and they didn't disintegrate or fall apart like most people say the paints do on a wet palette. These are the brushes I planned on using. I ended up just using the big brush. The other one was kind of worthless. It's too small for this kind of work. Now we get to the fun part. Just start slapping paint on there. Do the same thing you did when you're dry brushing. Start up and away from your painting side and then work your way down at a diagonal angle toward your brush side and just make streaks. Like you don't have to do it this exact way, but it's the way I keep in my head that allows me to stay consistent. And at this diagonal angle, it allows a cool color variation without making it look too horizontal. It'll look too fake that way and you don't want it too vertical. You don't want stripes. That would look ridiculous. When it comes to where to place the colors, I just start with brown at the bottom because, you know, dirt, grime, that's where it's going to settle. It's generally going to be brown. Uh, with the green and the blue, I just kind of put them where I want them. Wherever it's going to look cool, just kind of have them layer up as a stack in that diagonal and it should be fine. Just keep in mind, we're focusing on rule number one. If it looks cool, you're probably doing it right. 
None of this footage is sped up. This is me working in real time. You can see I'm just slapping the paint on there as fast as I can. You'll see me put a new color on and the previous colors are still wet. You want the paint as wet as possible by the time you get to the next step, which involves water. The color placement that really matters is the dark wood, like I said, at the bottom and then the Gravelord Gray at the top. You want the Gravelord Gray because it's more of the neutral color that is true to what the stone would look like, and it would make sense for it to look more like actual stone toward the top. It would have more weathering, which would leave more bare stone and stuff like that. Here it is in all its pre-water blending glory. You can see it's pretty chunky, the different colors laying up against one another, but we're about to change that. Here's a good shot of how loaded the brush is with water. It's pretty wet. And then you just start blending in the same direction that you put the paint on the model. Just work at diagonal angles and every few strokes or so, wipe the brush off, load the brush with water because you're gonna be mixing that paint together. That's part of the blending process to kind of create this like brownish gray that has variation. Too much blending and you just get this muddy gray across the whole thing and no color variation. The next step is to get a little wadded up paper towel and just lightly press across the wall in the wet spots and that'll just kind of absorb a bunch of the paint and reveal some of your dry brush texture and it will just lighten the overall tone across the model and it's just a really easy way to unmess up any of the really bad blends you did. Just kind of dob them away and you're left with something that looks really good. I mean we all know nature is pretty random and cares nothing about your feelings or the way you want things to look. So why not replicate that in your model? At this point, you can go back with the smaller brush and touch up some areas that you're not quite happy with and just use the same techniques just on a smaller scale. And here's the end result after I let it dry. I like to add the colors, like I said, because it just looks cool. And that's all we're going for in mini painting. We want stuff to look cool when we put it on the table. We want stuff to look cool when we've got it in a display cabinet. And if you can do it in a quick and easy way, why not go for it? Here it is completed. I painted the ground the same way, but with some different colors. And then I added some pigment powders to give it a more realistic look. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, thank you to the people in the Army Painter fan group that suggested I make a video of this. If anyone has any ideas for videos they would like to see, please leave in the comments. And if you like what you're watching, uh, please give me a subscribe. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.